Folks, today I have John, Dr. John Reed with us of Quinn Reed Associates. This guy is super sharp. You want to take a look at notes here. He's a Marshall Goldsmith 100 Coaches member. Marshall Goldsmith, they'll know who that is. Google it. Three organizations certified it. John here as a master coach, the Marshall Goldsmith Stakeholder Centered Coaching, International Coach Federation, and Association of Corporate Executives Coaches. He's uh, been a founding managing principal of Quinn Reed Associates for almost two decades now. This guy is an author. He's a speaker. He's a coach. Most importantly, he's a Navy vet, married, has four grown children, and is getting ready to celebrate his twin grandson's second birthday. He is going to dress up like a clown and go down a water slide for him. <laughs> he didn't want me to tell you that, but I know that's what he's going to do. How are you doing today, man? Uh, Charles, I'm, I'm doing fine. Happy to be here. And uh, thank you for thank you for planning that idea. I hadn't I, I usually would dress up like a clown, but the, the yeah. water slide, I think there's a little bit of a of a contour and a slide in, yeah. in the front in the front yard. Maybe I could get away Perfect. with it. Perfect. You just do a slip and slide. Make sure that when you're a clown, you use the red nose, though. The clowns without red noses, not trustworthy <laughs> at all. Fair enough. Fair enough. John, give us the uh, Reader's Digest version of kind of who you are and how you got to this point, sir. Sure. Uh, well, I, I've been very lucky, Charles. I I uh, went to college and in, in business school at Dartmouth and then went into management consulting like a lot of people and had 11 years of doing that and enjoying that. At the same time, I, I felt like I was getting interested also in the helping professions uh, mm -hmm. and actually thought about changing careers to be a physician or a minister, ultimately decided to go back to school again to get a PhD in organizational psychology. Uh, and, and did that at the University of Georgia and internship was at Emory University. And then um, got recruited into Anderson Consulting, now called Accenture, mm -hmm. and was a strategy consultant and also did some change management consulting. And that's where I first encountered executives who were getting advising, counseling, those all kinds of different words. Sure. back in the late 90s before executive coaching was even a, a typical thing uh, to use in a, a conversation. And uh, I've been doing that kind of work ever since. And uh, I'm very lucky uh, if you if you have good credentials in business and psychology, in coaching and also in ethics, I work under the ethics code of the American Psychological Association those four things sort of qualify you very, very well. So I have, I've been lucky to have a lot of clients in the U S and Europe. And, um, it's nice with, you know, with COVID and people being on, on zoom and other platforms, I don't have to travel 85% oh, yeah. of the time anymore. I, you know, I actually just travel maybe 20%. So, um, with that extra time, not traveling, I was able to, finish another coaching book uh, uh, this year uh, called Pinpointing Excellence. And uh, uh, I really am uh, lucky to have a, a good following because of that book as well. The coaching over Zoom, this existed for a while now, but so many people didn't take advantage of it. I'm like a, a lot of you, except I'm, you know, do some coaching as a full time thing. I also like you. It's technically a consultant, uh, but I figured out fig folks know what coaching is, so I just use it even if I'm not supposed to. Uh, but after we came back out of the pandemic, when I would offer people one on one, uh, give them the options, phone, Zoom or in person. Nobody's coming into the office anymore. And that's even in the rural areas where folks uh, have typically, you know, would, would love to use their. Well, we're just not a computer person. If they can find out they can pull you up right here and save a, a drive. They'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I find in working with CEOs and other other chief chief executives, uh, they they actually aren't in the office very often either. They're either occasionally out with with clients, and I am too, but but most of the time they can be working from a variety of different places, and um, 
you know, I would imagine it's a little tougher for United Airlines, Delta Airlines, Marriott, Hertz, yeah. all the, all the, you know, I'm sure I was half of their business from time. I'm kidding. From time, from time, <laughs> sure. from time to but a time. lot of folks, right. A, a lot, a lot of that. Yeah. So in, in looking at you talking about doing uh, one-on-one coaching, what's kind of the business model of Quint Reed Associates? Well, it's, it's really leadership development coaching, Charles, and, um, Everybody can always get better at leadership. And again, as I said, uh, to do a, a good job of that with with business people, you need to have strong training in business. And since it involves behavior change, you need strong changing and strong training in psychology. Uh, obviously, you need training in coaching. And I, I think it's also important to have good training in ethics uh, so that clients know that that you know you're operating ethically in the work that you do so that's kind of and the the i, I developed a um, business model called the tech four tec four which is the top it's top executive coach for tech four and it's in the book pinpointing excellence that i just came out in but basically it helps clients or customers buyers of coaching make sure that any coach they work with has very good strength and depth in all four of those areas so that they get the the, the best coach they can uh, with the best training they can for the best so, results. So when they're going out and shopping coaches, which could absolutely be overwhelming because any everybody has the ability to call themselves a coach these days, which are some pros and cons to it. You've given them a four step process to be able to qualify who is and isn't a right that fit. You, you hit the nail on the head. Yep. Look at yep. me. So how do you go? Do you give them that prior to working with you, obviously? Well, uh, I came out with the first coaching book about 10 years ago, Charles, and first introduced the tech four in that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd say it's pretty well known, not universally known, but but uh, if they look me up when they're thinking about working with me, they'll usually see some information about the book and maybe the tech four. And, you know, frankly, uh, the best hope we have of executive coaching moving from being just a sort of a field where anybody can show up right. to a real profession is by having the buyers become very, very selective, very discriminating and, and picking people who only have very strong training. Mm -hmm. So whether they work with me or not, I, I, I want to be sure that they're using the tech for, so they end up with the, the choice that's be best for them for the best value of their investment. Can you give us the, I already said it, Reader's Digest. Can you give us the Cliff Notes version of what Tech 4 is? Sure. Well, te Tech 4 is essentially a, uh, a system of evaluating the coach that you're considering in terms of their business education and training, their psychological education and training, their coaching education and training, and finally their ethics training and experience. So basically their education training and experience in those four areas. Uh, and, and most people are gonna be stuck at the business. A few extra have coaching, but probably very few will have the psychology training uh or, or in, in almost zero not to say people are unethical but very few have taken ethics training I'm, I'm as far as i can tell well you know if you get for example if you belong to some business organizations or in my case if you belong to the american psychological association they have an ethics code and the for example, the International Coach Federation, the ICF, uh, that I'm a master coach in, they have an ethics code. So there are there are ways to get get connected to an ethics mm -hmm. code. The important thing is if you're talking with a client and you're a coach to be able to point out that you operate under an ethics code 
so that they know that they can they can trust you. Um, Good deal. So for anybody that's watching here that is in the coaching realm, these are uh, a few things that you think folks are going to start really looking at down the pipeline instead of just I, instead of just I, finding I, their next guy on TikTok. I, I, I honestly, Charles, I hope in my lifetime it turns into a profession, you know, with real entry requirements and continuing education sure. requirements. Just, you know, what you what you'd expect of uh, uh, lots of other people. Architects. Well, you have that. Uh, you have that in the, the other you know, clients that I work with. Yeah. Anybody can call themselves a financial advisor, but if you want to be a fiduciary or RIA yet or CFP, you got to get a qualification for it. That's Same exactly for right. Real estate. Anybody could sell a piece of property, but you got to go have an actual real estate agent license. Right. Pass right. the test. Right. And if you don't, you feel more comfortable if you know you're dealing with somebody who's had actual training and is licensed or has passed the boards or sure. whatever, yeah, whatever the guy, it happens to be. Yeah. The guy in the black band behind Mapco that promised me he'd get 100% return never gave me my money back. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, so. so in looking at the leadership, going back to the business model then, so we've got a, a proof of uh, you know, proof of difference at least. What does that leadership development, that behavior coaching look like on a one-on-one -on -one basis? Who are your clients? Oh, sure. And how do you work with them? Sure. Uh, well, you know, after... 20 some odd years, there are all kinds of, you know, variations, but just in general, Charles, uh, usually if a person starts working with me, they're already very accomplished and, and uh, successful, but they want to get even better. Right. And so one of the things that we do early on is typically get them some feedback uh, about their strengths and development areas. Right. And we do that with some psychological testing. And we also do that with something called 360 feedback. I'm sure you know what 360 feedback is. It's a basically. Marshall Goldsmith uh, special, isn't it? That's a Marshall that he he he, he calls it stakeholder feedback. Right. But but basically, you're absolutely right. Uh, and so you figure out what people think of you. Right. And then uh, what they see as your strengths and development areas. And then you pick some things that you want to work on to strengthen, or in some cases, change behavior in. You go about, and then we work on that for six, nine, 12 months. And then you also can go, I will go get more feedback for the client from stakeholders at the end of that coaching period so they can see how they have moved the needle over that period of whatever it is. Again, six, nine, 12, right. months, sometimes multi-year engagements. How much pushback do you get, if any, uh, from Charles Alexander, CEO of Fortune 1000 that comes rolling in that's uh, very impressed with your credentials and you sit down and tell me, hey, Charles, we're going to go ask your your boss, your employees, your wife, your kids, I assume, uh, what do they have to say about that? Well, you're, you know, when I'm trying to qualify a, a client, a prospective mm -hmm. client to determine if I'd like to work with that person, just like they're trying to qualify me, which they should do. If, if I don't think that that person is motivated to get better and to do the work in coaching that it requires to get better, then that's probably not a very good fit, at least for me. Right. Uh, so I look for motivation. What does this person want to get out of coaching and why? Um, I look for self-awareness. That's, that's another thing that is very helpful in coaching. Um, if you have, if you have a curiosity about why, you behave the way you do and you want to learn more about that because that's a pathway into being able to change your behavior you know that but um <clears throat> so if you know why you behave in a certain way then we have a basis on which to make some shifts so maybe you ch you change the way you behave in certain situations how are these and i assume more than not are executives how are they 
finding out about you in order to do this period? I, and I know it, the most common answer is word of mouth referrals, which I do appreciate. Uh, yeah. But what what additional things are you guys doing in order to you know, well keep the pipeline full of these great folks? I again, I'm I'm very lucky. Uh, I think I think uh, the more the more prominent or the more accomplished or experienced you become, the more widely you're known. I'm not Mar I'm not Marshall Goldsmith, uh, but I'm I'm, I'm you got the haircut. Well. I got the haircut. Yeah, he's better looking than I am, definitely. But uh, um, but I, I I think that's part of how it happens. I my social media folks told me uh, last week that I have uh, almost nine thousand direct LinkedIn connections. So when I post, for example, if I post this interview on LinkedIn, there'll be a great many people that'll see it. And um, I, I often get asked to do what you kindly have asked me to do. Um, so I, I think that's how they hear about me. And of course, if you do a good job for people who are very senior, CEOs, C-suite, mm -hmm. all managing partners of law sure. firms, they know a lot of people and they they pass the word. So when, when they're out when they're out on the golf course and they see that James suddenly doesn't fly into a, a fit every time he splices and he's he's making more money and he seems happier. Uh, they they want to know what he's smoking. And he's like, I'm not you're, smoking. He's <laughs> like, I'm Dr. John Reed. Well, you're very, you're very kind, Charles. But uh and, and as a, a guy who used to be a good golfer but now plays five times a, a year, sure. I can tell you uh I'm one of those people, and you can see after I slice the ball or hook it into the water, sure. you can see steam coming out of my ear. So the cartel murders, and yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's see, easy. It's just, easy to try and teach people, but that doesn't necessarily mean you do it yourself. Oh man, that's. I was telling uh, John before we hopped on here. I was. I am my worst business plan. I had to go out and hire my own coach in order to take my own medicine because I would not listen to me. The uh, you you just referred. You said you had social media people. Is that somebody internal that handles that and maybe a couple of other things? Did you hire? Yeah. Did you outsource yeah. some of that? Uh, I uh, it's a combination. I have okay. I have some people internally, but I also have. Uh, I can think of a guy who's a uh, who built, essentially built my last website, which frankly is now five years old and needs to be upgraded. But when sure. that happens. Um, there, there are a lot of great resources out there, and I will tell you that I am known in my own family, Charles, as Fred Flintstone. I am the, I am probably the least technically skilled person you're ever uh -huh. going to meet. I mean, my wife has just now allowed me to handle the TV remote, so. The TV remotes have gotten out. a little simpler over the years. They, they got out of hand, and now they've come back to size. True. On the other hand, you'd be you'd be surprised how badly I can screw things up. Uh, so, I, I let I let everybody else handle technology, and it's a you know being able to sign in today correctly and do this with you. That's an accomplishment for me. We should we, we need to give the man a high five. Well, then looking <laughs> at that, so you guys you guys you have, how many people do you have in your office? How uh, many folks I, work at Quinn Reed? Uh, it sort of depends. I have, I have uh, a couple of people who are full time, and then I have a whole host of, I would say, alliance partners. Yeah. Um, and it sort of depends on the project mm -hmm. uh, and what we're trying to do. Um, but you know, uh, it's 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 a it, having a consulting firm is fun, and it's good because you can essentially control your own hours most of the time. Uh, it's different than when I was at, for example, a big consulting firm like Anderson Consulting, because there we used to, as you, I'm probably sure you, you, sure. you get up uh, Monday morning or Sunday night, you're on a plane, uh, and if you can get back to the office by Friday morning and then have a couple of days with your family, that's great. But then you're, sure. you know, you're back on a plane global staffing model. So uh, I, 
I can do that if I want. And I have some clients around the country who occasionally want me to show up in Dallas or Denver or Houston or New York or Chicago or Boston, whatever. But that's not the norm. You know, I sleep a lot better now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping in my own bed more, you know, and my wife right. hasn't hasn't kicked me out of the house yet. So that's a, you, you've hung in there for uh, several, you've, a few decades now. <laughs> yes, so, I'm very, very lucky. So in looking at um, and in this throw you a little little curveball here, but I know that you can handle it in terms of this being a Marshall Goldsmith coaching mindset. Uh, I know he's real big and and a lot of coaches are and almost I won't say to a fault, but they can almost overwhelm somebody. So you're taking on a new client. One of the first things I see a lot of people are asking uh, about not just what they want to do, but they dig into the why a little bit. How do you go about handling whatever you whatever it's called, the why, the mission, the vision, the purpose? Uh, how do you engage with them? discussing that without throwing them off kilter because so many of them think of it as woo woo science and you're trying to bring them back to this is legitimate yeah, psychology. You know, business people, executives really aren't going to trust you or work with you and open up to you unless they know that you really are well trained and understand business. That's the first thing. So I never lead with, I'm a psychologist. I want to understand your emotions and your right. anxieties because that would be the shortest coaching engagement. They recoil, ever. don't they? Well, they, they, they just, for, it's like anything else. You know, if I were to hire somebody who's a social media expert, uh, the first thing I want to know is that they are indeed an expert at that mm -hmm. and they understand what I need. If they then are very good at understanding me and reading me and helping me get better at whatever it is I'm trying to do, that'll be great. But I have to I have to know that they understand where I am first. And, and something that I often will ask when I'm trying to determine if this is a good fit is something like, so, Charles, if we could hit a home run in coaching right over six months nine months 12 months whatever sure where would you like to be 12 months from now specifically what would that look like and and that sort of gets at pretty quickly what their motivation is a gotcha. little bit about their situation right um and then I, I pretty early on will say to you, I'll say, Charles, just, just so again, I'm sure you know this, but I'm a licensed psychologist. That just means I work under an ethics code. Confidentiality is a basic part of that. So anything you and I talk about here when we're working together is completely confidential, unless the only exception to that is if you tell me you're going to bring a bomb into the building at some point right. and then there's a duty to warn but right. except for that it's completely confidential and you know Charles many of the people that I work with are so good and have so many different stakeholders that they need to manage and have have a good perception with a good a good facade right mm -hmm. which is what senior people have to do every day in some cases i'm the only person except for maybe their spouse or partner with whom they can take off the facade right. and just be who they really are and that includes being somewhat vulnerable talking about what's difficult talking about uh, what they're anxious about uh those kinds of things so again trust and confidentiality are absolutely critical good deal so you took that curveball and knocked it out of the park uh, i'll throw you a softball now we'll, we'll start winding down here a little bit okay uh, and this is uh a super softball you you you're author of how many books now oh only only two i uh, okay. the, well, just say so, more than so, me. well but you know marshall goldsmith has uh written or co-authored or edited 40, I believe the number is 40 
two books. What's, Just your favorite Marshall, what's your favorite Marshall Goldsmith book? The favorite, he just came out in the last year with his most recent one, which I highly recommend to anybody. It's called The Earned Life. Ooh. The Earned, E-A-R-N-E-D, The Earned Life. Spectacular book. But he also has, I believe, three other New York Times bestsellers, uh, like Triggers, which you right. mentioned you're reading. I did. There's another one called What Got You Here Won't Get, Get You There. there. Um, and there's another one, I believe, called Mojo. Uh, okay. So he's, he's made enormous contributions to the field, uh, both as a practitioner, uh, but also as a thought leader. And uh, he is he is very devoted now to knowledge philanthropy, which is simply doing whatever he can to help other people and to give away everything that he knows. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there are a number of us who are trying to follow, humbly speaking, trying sure. to follow in his footsteps. Uh, but I admire him so very much. John, how can somebody get in touch with you? Uh, they can reach me. Uh, uh, my my mobile is 832-215-4018. Um, uh, and uh, my email is just john at and then Quinn Reed Associates, one word, john at Quinn Reed Associates dot com. Uh, uh, and you can you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me uh uh, lots of, posted in lots of places. So that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. I currently, I could live anywhere, Charles, in the, in the, the world, as long as there's an airport and Wi-Fi. Sure. My wife is the, uh, the president of Miami Children's Hospital. Wow. So I... You buried up, my friend. I'm speaking to you from Coral Gables, Florida, Miami. And, uh, uh, but again, I... I, I, you could find me at any point in time. I could be in any number of different cities sure. for, for work. So. Well, folks, I, Hey, John, I appreciate it. Great interview. Lots of good uh, nuggets in there. Uh, folks reach out to John. Maybe he'll send you a picture of uh, his uh, clown outfit as he's slipping and sliding. <laughs> a two year old birthday party. They'll have at least two cakes and all the balloons. And yeah, and I, I get a big, a big, big, big red nose. Okay. I would appreciate Got it. That. Hey, Got man, it Charles. Have a good day, sir. Thank you very much for having me, Charles. Appreciate it.